It is GDC week, and um, last week we talked about NVIDIA's uh, DLSS disclosures, uh, some big titles getting big features, um, but there was more. There was much more, and um, we weren't available, um, specifically Alex and myself, but John, one of the things you did take a look at uh, from the NVIDIA side was the Covert Protocol demo. Which yeah. is interesting because we've been looking at this uh, ACE stuff from NVIDIA for a while now, wondering if it could actually have any place within gameplay because, you know, the concept of having uh, diverse random discussions with NPCs doesn't seem extremely compelling. But this is an actual demo that was designed to basically say that, hey, this does have gameplay implications. And you did play it, right? And what are your thoughts? I mean, first of all, tell us well, what the demo is about and how the AI stuff factors into it. Sure. I kind of loosely played it because right. it is voice driven. Uh, they were actually physically controlling the character, but I was the one that was uh, providing the voice input. Yeah, this, this was a remote questions. presentation to be correct. Clear. Yeah. Exactly. So the idea here is that it is uh, the demo they showed is essentially like a, a covert ops type of thing where you're tasked with figuring out the room number uh, for your specific target. And it never actually lets you go up to the room yet. It's more about how can you get that information from the characters in this world. Uh, and that obviously involves conversation and sort of toying with them to find ways to convince them to give you that information. But obviously, um, Using this generative AI approach, the idea is that the player has sort of full freedom to interact with these characters in a different way. And I will say the first thing it reminded me of is uh, older text parser based games right. where, you know, where you have the freedom to just type in whatever you want. And depending on how it's implemented, you can have a fair amount of variation in terms of the response. That's what it felt like a throwback to, but obviously more advanced. Right. Um, they basically showed this whole, so there's two sides. Let me talk about the demo first. And basically what, what we did is we walked up to these different characters and they just let me ask questions and I kind of poked and prodded at them. Firstly, I wanted to see like, what is their actual awareness of the things around them? And I was able to get some of them to answer questions about things in the environment. And sometimes it didn't work and it would be met with a different sort of response. So it was kind of hit or miss, but the characters, the AI did seem to have some awareness of what objects were around the AI, which is neat. And they also have it functioning. So like if you go around and cause a ruckus, if you will, uh, they can also be aware of what you've done in that space. Mm -hmm. So there is like an actual sort of awareness being fed into them so that they, they know what's going on and can sort of more accurately react to the player's behavior, which could potentially be cool. Um, I also just enjoyed sort of bouncing questions off them uh, just to see what kind of answers you get. And it actually, so I guess the thing is like, how would this actually work? And they should have served their whole control panel setup sort of per character setup that you can do within Unreal Engine, which is, this was an UE5 based demo where you can make all sort of parameter adjustments on this character. So it's not like it's just plugged into something like chat GPT and it feeds whatever. There is actually like, seems to be a full implementation process required to make this work on a per character basis where you're sort of fine tuning their personality types, their behavior towards the player, you know, their position in the world, like what they're there to do and what they can and cannot do. And that sort of defines the type of responses you get. So it's not just like flat AI driven responses that you would expect from a typical large language model question and answer scenario. So it does, there seems to be flavor there. And they also sort of noted, I think this is important that this is not designed to replace uh, written characters and performed characters for like a story necessarily, right? This is more like uh, to to flesh out the world with these NPCs. And I know not everybody's interested in this, but I do think it's an interesting thought experiment and could potentially be useful for certain types of games, like say a Hitman game, which is what this demo reminded me of. Since fundamentally you were trying to figure out the room number to this guy, but it's a private upper president kind of guy, I guess. I, I actually don't know what he is because it kind of picks up in the middle of this. And the way I did it was uh, by, I, f 
I sifted through these packages that were placed outside of the main entryway to the hotel and sort of used that information gleaned there to tell a colleague of this guy that was sitting in the lobby working uh, that he had an important package that could impact the meeting that they were going into and that, but he couldn't get a hold of him. And that convinced the guy to go to the front desk and ask the attendant at the desk uh, if she could deliver the package to room number, whatever. So just by doing that, you actually hear the room number uh, of where the guy is at and are able to go there. Okay. But it cool. seems like there's a lot of other approaches to do it as well that are possible, which also made me think about the implications of testing this sort of thing and what a nightmare it would be for any sort of quality <laughs> assurance. Yeah, because when you're just opening the floodgates on this and that's what made me that's what reminded me more of this being closer it's like a a bridge between text parser games and and like true uh large language model ai stuff where there is a finite sort of response it feels like if a character is not going to give you a certain type of information they're just going to come back with different responses that are sort of shutting you down sort of what would happen normally so I guess the question is, is how, how much freedom can actually be gained here? Like what's possible in the context of a game? At what point does this become not fun? Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so it seems like they they have at least thought a lot about this. And I guess what makes it impressive though, is that the input is they take your voice, uh, translate that to text. Then that text is fed into the AI, which then parses it and comes up with a response. And then they're able to dynamically feed that response through another process that not only transforms it to natural speech, but also properly contorts the face and creates like facial expressions that match the tone of what they're saying. So uh, whether or not you want to see this in games is beyond the point. It's just it's impressive to see this work at this level where the response from the NPC is done in such a way that it actually feels like a performance mm -hmm. rather than just like a, an AI response with a okay. robotic expression and lip flaps. Like it actually did look convincingly nice in that regard. It sounds like there's a potential uh, implementations here for like immersive sims and stuff. That's a bit that's, sort of more advanced. That's exactly what I'm thinking. Like, I absolutely think this this would make a lot of sense for a game like Hitman because yeah. people are like, oh, who needs the background information for NPCs? Like, it's not that important to the story. And ultimately, I kind of agree with that in many cases. But in a game like Hitman, the idea is that you're just this piece in this world that is existing around you. And if all the NPCs actually do have this kind of stuff behind them and the backstories are somewhat defined by this control panel set up and the tuning available to the designer. Uh, I actually think that that becomes really interesting in terms of how you can deal with people in that world. Again, mm -hmm. super difficult to test. I'm sure this would be nuts, but it, it could be really, really cool in that context. The other thing they mentioned though, that I didn't, I, it wasn't available for this demo is that they are also exploring ways to, to do this sort of interaction without relying on voice. Because I kind of pose this thing as like, not everybody wants to sit there on their couch with a microphone, uh, even if it's in their controller and talk out loud to the game. Yeah. Right. I certainly don't want to do that most of the time either, but they seem to be working on some sort of more dynamic uh, dialogue system generation thing uh, that again, I haven't seen, and I don't know what that would entail, but the idea is that the, you, the choices available to you can sort of change dynamically based on your actions and the types of questions you initially asked and can kind of mm -hmm. steer the conversation. So I, either way, it's still all development stuff, but I think there is something potentially fascinating here and what they propose doesn't feel like it's just let's replace all the voice actors and writers with AI. It does not feel like that. It, it, it seems like something that's a different sort of uh, job for designers within the studio and something applied to specific use cases rather okay. than just dialogue across the board. Mm -hmm. Sounds interesting. Any thoughts, so, Alex? Yeah. I mean, I think it's just another step of, current AI programming, it sounds like. It sounds like it's just another more complex, perhaps uh, one that offers like more reactivity, uh, but it still seems highly directed based upon what you sound like. Yeah. These aren't just like random uh, archetypes that are just thrown up on there. They're completely defined and they also have like objectives of their own. 
uh, and also limitations, it sounds like. So this sounds to me like all very positive things beyond the immersive sim scenario. I could also imagine this uh, in almost any game that where you have like an interaction with people that I don't know, where that you're just kind of like a newcomer into an area Like you could go into a Skyrim uh, town, for example, and, and like when people walk to you, they say, hello, Dragonborn, or whatever the heck they say. <laughs> you know, they could actually not just be like weirdos. They could actually... <laughs> Why walk they, when you could ride? Uh, yeah, I know. Like they could actually maybe have a wild line that is a bit more contextual to like what you're, they see you doing in that moment. Yeah. You know, the, like, the location of the arrow to the knee could, could change dynamically. <laughs> mm. The possibilities yeah, right? are endless. Yeah, like I could see this having much more... Yeah, preventing the whole like wildland repeating issue that games have, that those games specifically have. So actually, it's funny you mentioned that, Alex. One potential scenario that would be cool, but not necessarily gameplay changing, is like a sports game. Uh, if the athletes oh. in the field actually were able to voice things, you could hear it like over the mics, or like there's ways to integrate that where the players actually react to what's happening. Mm hmm. Yeah, okay, so, so here's my fundamental question, John, which is, oh. could this demo have been done without AI? Oh, I, absolutely. <laughs> okay. But it would have just been a more... It's basically... It would have been more passive. It's trying to come up with an idea that already exists and make it different. Right. And this sort of level of interaction is not something we typically see in modern games. And that's, again why I mentioned text parsers because there was a level of sort of like adventurousness and freedom and like uh, this feeling of like, Ooh, what can I actually do here? That text parser games allowed that disappeared when everything had to become more defined by very specific inputs. Uh, so it does, I would say this game, this concept they showed would have been significantly more boring if it was not done this way, because okay, then you're right. just going up, you know, clicking on dialogue options until the right one appears. Where here, there is an actual sense of you needing to sort of poke and prod at things to figure out what works and what doesn't. And there is a level of excitement to just messing with something like this that I did enjoy. 